covert narcissists thrive um, by pretending to be something they are not, altruistic, kind, empathetic, connected. Um, they pretend to be codependents. They get what they need out of life by creating this false self, this facade that gets them the money, the respect, but all at the same time, they're in these relationships where they're hurting people and behaving pathologically narcissistic behind the scenes. The next step is to understand how passive aggressive covert narcissists are. And I cannot say this more, um, I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not take on a covert narcissist directly. you think you know a narcissist, don't speak to them. They're dangerous. Uh, any of this stuff that you do, if you try to play them at their own game, they're going to come at you hard. They're going to come at you strong. They're going to try and hurt you. If not physically, they will, they will work tirelessly to destroy you somehow. Um, you know, with smear campaigns and stuff. Hey guys, so today is June 1st, which is Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day, and I'm gonna do the exact opposite that was just advised. I'm gonna target a narcissist and expose him, and that's pretty much the worst thing you can do to a narcissist. So I'm sure he's gonna start a huge smear campaign against me because nobody has done what I'm gonna do to the extent I'm gonna do it in this video series. The person I'm talking about is a guy that goes under the name Dern Rider on YouTube and he's a self-proclaimed leader of the vegan community on YouTube. Um, but he's not actually vegan, which I will go through later in the series. So what is a narcissist? The word narcissist is something people throw around a lot these days. I'm just defending my public image from some delusional narcissist. This is what makes me think you're a narcissist. Oh, what a narcissist! But I think most people don't actually know what, what it involves um, to be an actual narcissist. This low-level, hazy, um, mediocre way in which the word narcissism is thrown around now, in which it can come to mean, thank you, that's very kind of you, um, it can mean anything, anything that upsets you, anything that you don't like, uh, then they're a narcissist, that person's a narcissist, and then the word gets bandied around, and to the point where it becomes almost meaningless. And I think some people get a kick out of accusing other people of narcissism, and they do it with just willful abandon, um, with no real care for the actual academic literature, no real care for the means of diagnosis, um, and if you ask them to name the nine traits of malignant narcissism, they probably couldn't even give you two of them. And it basically has come to mean anybody who does anything that I don't like. I think it gets silly, it gets childish. So in this video I'm gonna go through the official traits of what it takes to be a narcissist. You have to have at least five traits out of nine to be a actual narcissist. What is a narcissist? What is a narcissist? Well, we all have various narcissistic traits, but you have to have an awful lot of them before you're defined as a narcissist per se. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the traits? You think you're extraordinary, you think you're unique. Grandiosity, mm -hmm. arrogant. You manipulate other people to your, for your own ends. And that leads into a lack of empathy excessive need of admiration from others and very controlling about how others see you. So that's a very brief explanation of what a narcissist is but let's go through each trait one by one and I'm gonna show you examples of Harley exhibiting that exact behavior. Throughout this video I'm gonna use the videos of a psychiatric nurse here on YouTube. She's an expert in this field. My name is Dana. Currently I am a psychiatric nurse. I work with people with personality disorders and mental illness. I also worked at a domestic violence shelter where I worked with victims of all kinds of abuse. There's a difference between you know full-blown clinical narcissistic personality disorder versus somebody who's just narcissistic. Um, you know, narcissistic is, is it's an adjective. It's, you know, this person's really full of themselves is basically what that means. The clinically diagnosed narcissistic personality disorder is very different. Um, these people are dangerous, they're destructive, 
they are they're pathological in their behavior they're liars they tend to be um, cheaters they tend to steal um, they cause a tremendous amount of damage and destruction in lives so let me run through what it takes for a person to be clinically diagnosed as having narcissistic personality disorder for a person to have narcissistic personality disorder they have to have at least five of the following criteria number one have a grandiose sense of self Put yourself in my fucking shoes. You wouldn't handle it, man. You would not motherfucking last 10 minutes at our pace on the internet. But it's when you think that only you could present this program. No one else could do it. Yeah. Because you're super, super special. Uh, they exaggerate achievements and talents. Because you don't have the motherfucking passion. And I could ride my bike fucking faster than 99.9% of the planet. Nobody on the planet has a social media pool and not affluence, influence that I have. People will stop me on the street and say, hey, you're that Duran Rodder guy. Even in Thailand, Thai people stop me. And all the Thai are so close and they know who we are here. We are the two most famous vegans on the planet. I mean, we've created this YouTube community. We have created that single-handedly. I can't think of fucking anybody who doesn't go next level when they follow exactly what I say. They expect to be recognized as superior without the proper achievement. So I gave him my tips. He didn't mention that though in his video, did he? He used to do a lot of snobby. He didn't mention the, our conversation for one or two hours, one on one. Gold information. The best information you can ever get about YouTube. Didn't mention that. Number two, they're preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. The whole vegan scene pretty much is on YouTube because of me. I was the first vegan on YouTube. I was the first vegan on YouTube to do vlogs. I was the first vegan cyclist to get on Strava. I was the first vegan cyclist in, on Doi Satep. Everybody in Chiang Mai who's here is here because of me. I get so many comments. I've got over a million comments. I've got so many comments. Out of my community. Oh, my community. My community. Mm, but that wonder. That'd be under it. Yeah, I, I see subscriber review kind of, kind of bullshit. I fucking choose to lace up my shoes every day in this community. This is a community I've built. Boom. Men community. We built this community. We've got so many viewers. And all over the world, little events are popping up. <laughs> so, uh, I keep on building these communities. I build these communities. They're popping up everywhere. There's my community popping everywhere. Uh, uh. No, Jerry Ryder. No, you haven't. <laughs> This one would be kind of hard to prove because most narcissists don't think that they're fantasies. So there's not a single person on the planet more effective at vegan activism, like it or hate it or whatever, that's just the truth's the truth. You don't have to like the truth for the truth to be the truth. It's just the fucking truth. Like they think that they're realities, right? That we built, basically built this online social media, vegan community, YouTube, etc. 99.9% .9 of the channels on YouTube sprouted from us. So I don't know how you would really even kind of prove that. The only reason you have fucking views on that video is because of me, even if you're a hater. I guess you'd have to listen to them talk and then you'd have to kind of make that judgment. But if you want the best fucking results, it has to be all my advice. Look, you give me anyone on the fucking street, any motherfucker out there, guy or girl, I'll make him 50 to 100 grand the first year guaranteed on YouTube social media. Guaranteed. My template in my ebook, Carb the Fuck Up, I've got a template in there. And anyone who claims that they can predict everything about online success is either wrong or they are lying to you. Chronic lying. All narcissists lie. So let me just get that out there now. They all lie. With Harley, the problem is he lies about so much in his own life and other people. Durian Ryder claims to be this real, honest, and transparent person, but in reality, he's just a liar who will do and say anything as long as it's in his best interest. Uh, you, you buy my ebook? You can get fucking sick results. You can lose the weight. You can get YouTube income. And that includes telling you lies that are too good to be true. You give me anyone and I can give them crazy fucking results. Their lies are small, medium, and large lies. They lie, lie, lie. They lie when the truth would work better. And he's just lying about everything. Even like really minor trivial things where you wouldn't think a person would lie about it. And this is because they don't lie for the same reasons that normal, that normal people lie. Narcissists tend to just kind of tell outrageous lies across the board. I think even my harshest critics would have to agree with me that soft drinks certainly aren't good for weight loss and they're quite counterintuitive. 
but Durian Rider tries to convince his followers that you can eat a limitless amount of carbohydrates, even in the form of processed sugar, and you will still lose weight, and anyone of sound mind would immediately figure out that's complete bullshit, but the Raw Till 4 community is quite cult-like, and they listen to Durian Rider's word as if it were holy doctrine. Narcissists lie, they lie to feed their ego, um, and lying feeds their ego because every time that they can get one of us to believe what they're saying, in a way it's a small win for them, right? It's a way for them to feel smug and superior and intelligent, and it's a way for them to, because it's like, well, you're an idiot for buying that, so I am so smart. But of course you would buy it, because normal people don't lie about stuff like this. Just keep that in mind, this person lies so much, and I'm sure he's gonna make up a bunch of lies about me after I upload this video. So just just keep that in mind that everything he says, not everything, but <laughs> a lot of what he says is just taken out of thin air. Okay, so number three, believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or associate with other special or high status people or institutions. Unless you're a pro YouTuber, you probably won't be able to relate to PewDiePie like I do. Some people just don't get it. They're just basic fucking people. And I'm not going to fucking change my lifestyle or change who I am to get respect from basic minded people. Not everyone can handle stardom at a social media level. And YouTube, you could be world famous. My definition of world famous is you can go anywhere in the world and people will stop you on the street every day. I could go to Iceland. I could go to Argentina. I could go ride my bike in Thailand. People will stop me every day on the street somewhere. Number four, requires excessive admiration. Cunts fucking say we don't work hard. We're not activists. Our message is shit. We get stopped in the street more than anyone. We have the biggest free events in the fucking world. We can create the biggest free events in anyone. I pour more time and more heart and more energy than anyone else on the fucking planet on the internet to help people. Number five, has a sense of entitlement. Um, for example, unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or her expectations. You seem to trust me, but you have to trust. They demand trust that isn't earned. I want you to trust. Trust me. And they're just going to talk, 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 talk their way into getting the victim to trust them. I want you to trust me. Even though their words and their actions don't line up. And even though they might have had some really outrageously bad behavior like last week. Trust. Trust. Trust what I say. I'd rather have people's trust because I'm being an honest motherfucker. It was kind of on about the trust. It's all about trust. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. It's all about the trust. Like with the whole trust thing, really go above and beyond to instill this feeling in their victim of, wow, you can really trust me. You're probably going to be exploited at some point if you don't trust what I say. He's really pushing home the trust me and you will be okay kind of situation. You know, if a, if a narcissist is easy to spot like that and they're very grandiose and they're telling these, you know, these huge stories where they're the hero and, you know, thank goodness they were there because they saved the day and... Shit happens, man. Luckily, people trusted in Duranada. This is something where, like, you're going, hey guys, shit can happen anytime. Follow me. I will guide you. <laughs> so he's promoting the fear of death. This is effectively, he is telling his audience, you can die at any time, but if you trust me, you'll be safe. Trust me. Trust me. Follow me. You can die at any time. I want your trust. Trust in me. Only me. Not even doctors. You know, everybody that they work with is an idiot. People are so fucking dumb, man. And they're this genius. There's so many people out there who think they know shit, but they haven't even done nothing. And it's, it's grandiose. That's a huge red flag. Like, that's an obvious red flag. Or, trust me, you're on my team and there we can fight off anybody that's not the same. So it's, this is like 101 psychological manipulation. This one is seen, I think, probably the most frequently. Um, and it may not, however, it may not be seen until um, their mask slips. So that's a term, narcissists are kind of these, these actors in life, right? And they go through and they have all these different masks on. They have the mask of the good dad or the good husband or the, you know, the CEO or 
you know, all the all of these different masks. And from time to time, when their bad behavior surfaces, that mask will slip and you see what they really are about. Like with Bill Cosby, right? You know, here he is, America's dad. And then come to find out, wow, this guy here, he's been giving lectures all over the world about, um, you know, kindness and compassion and being good to each other. And here he is drugging and raping women. Interpersonally exploitative, taking advantage of others to achieve his or her own his or her own ends. They're serial liar. They're ch they tend to be serial liars, cheaters, and thieves. Um, again, this is, you have to kind of know them for any length of time to really see this behavior in full effect. But narcissists, it tends to be, um, they're intentionally very ex exploitative. Um, it's not like there's situations in their life that drive them to lie or to cheat or to steal. This is just what they do because they want to do it. I don't even have to show any examples on that one because his whole channel is based on exploiting others. And also throughout this series, um, it will be obvious that he's very uh, exploitative. They lack empathy. They're um, unwilling or... Un unable, I guess, really, to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. That's why they have no problem with their behavior, because they just don't see how it, it impacts us. I just wanted to share something that I saw that made me upset. Um, I didn't believe it at first, but this is Harley Durian Ryder's reaction to seeing a 19-year-old domestic, domestic abuse victim's post. So this girl here, Ellie, her housemate, as you can see, was attacked. Her nose was broken and her teeth. It's really graphic. Um, and a lot of people were supportive and wanted to help by sharing this and advocated for her leaving the boyfriend that did this and going to the police and getting him prosecuted. And I just wanted to show Harley's response and this is from his real account i didn't believe it at first i used to really like him and freely but now i cannot believe that i ever supported them like i just didn't know that this is the way that he thinks um harley steamrolled this and he said it was a hundred percent her fault so what a dumb bitch hopefully she learned to lesson not to be such a fucking doormat loser i'm astounded that he could think like this it's a 19 year old. She's essentially just, she's a child I look at her as, and she was assaulted. It's a confusing situation. It's a horrible one. He's abusive. She's scared. It's not always black and white. And the fact that she's trying to go to the police at this point and he's just shitting on that, it makes me really upset. So I want people to know what he is really like. Um, there are loads of comments here from him defending it. Um, calling her a loser. Durian Ryder, you're the one who's being a loser here. Like, there's just loads of comments and people defending, defending her. And I just, I can't believe that he would post stuff like this. It's like he's being controversial just for views. And I've seen that before, but I never thought that he would turn it on an abuse victim. It's so cheap and tacky and callous. And I just, I'm kind of in shock. I never thought that he would say something like this. And I just wanted to screenshot it so there's a record of it. Um, yeah, I just, if anybody still supports him, I wanted to let them know. And in case you're confused and you think that this is maybe like a hacked account, no, it's really him because he's still posting videos from his channel. And also... It's his real account. I'll click on it at the top. Durian Ryder says it's her fault. This is his real profile. He called her a dumb bitch. I just... I think what Durian said is so unacceptable, so if you agree with me, you should not follow his work. I no longer support him. I'm not going to support Freely, unless there's like an apology or an explanation issued that this was all some kind of disgusting joke or his account was somehow like compromised. I honestly can't believe that someone could look at this face and tell this person that it was their fault. And telling someone that they deserve it and they're a doormat and a loser is not a way to support them in getting out of a bad relationship. And I think that he should be shamed and then forgotten about. You're a dumb fuck loser if someone's punched you once before and then they punch you again a few days later or a month later or whatever. If you stuck around, 
In my opinion, you've been a dumb fuck fucking loser. And it's just a fucking choice to be a dumb cunt fucking loser, doormat, dumb bitch, dumb cunt, arrogant, whatever the fuck, asshole, whatever. Dumb fuck. Clearly, Durian Rider's advice isn't helping. She's also having relationship issues, and Durian Rider's advice is to only date boys who have vasectomies? Are you that disconnected from reality that you think there's plenty of teenage boys with vasectomies? She also admitted to being depressed, and you just tell her to harden the fuck up, do whatever you tell her to do, or else she'll get even fatter and more depressed, and will eventually end up slitting her own wrists. Great fucking job, you idiot. Um, they're often envious of others and believe others are envious of them. Some fuck still said, oh, you students drivers just drill us. You're just a gutless fuck who's jealous of me. I've got a few stalkers over the years, and they generally have one thing in common. They're just jealous as fuck. There's jealousy. People have jealousy. People get jealous that there's jealous fucks out there. Jealous, fat, slobs. All I know is you're a troll and you're fucking jealous. And that does make you a bad person, that you're jealous. The narcissist does not, they're jealous and they will always try and treat you like a piece of dirt and they'll try and stomp on you at any possible moment. I put my biggest hat on the moment, a jealous fat slob. Derek, you sound like your jelly bro, you sound like your jelly. I just feel sorry for you, is that you're so fucking jealous. Because you're a rich, fat, bored, spoiled kid and you're just jealous you couldn't do anything good with your life. None of the haters, none of the hecklers, none of the people said you can't do it. Have you ever come up to me in the last six years and go, wow, Harley, you fucking proved me wrong, man. They just hate you. They're jealous of you or whatever. So they're looking for any excuse or whatever because you're doing something that they believe can't be done. Most people are going to be jealous as fuck. And they show and or they show arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. You're wrong and I'm right. And you don't have to agree with me, but you're still wrong and I'm still right. And anyone who disagrees with me, you're still fucking wrong. And those people out there who disagree with me, you're still fucking wrong. You don't have to agree with me, but you are still fucking wrong. These fuckers don't have to agree with me, but they're still wrong, and they're still fat, and they're still ever always going to be out of shape, and they'll still never ever be able to keep up with Duran Rider. Alright, you can disagree with me, but you're still fucking wrong. <laughs> and you don't have to agree with me, but you're still wrong. I'm sorry all the self-entitled people out there who just think that they deserve everything. They're self-entitled as fuck and they've got a self-entitled disease mindset and see how fucking dumb people are. What sort of dad are you? You're a fucking shit dad. You're a scum. There's so many motherfucking suckers out there. They don't have a fucking clue. They're just in it for the money. Their egos are too big. You know, you're not worth the word dad or father. You know, you live such pathetic lives. You're not a good dad. You just fucked some chick, got her pregnant and did a runner. You are scum. The money system, the corporate system, the meat, military, medicine, media. This is one big joke. All they do is they just watch videos and then they just leave nasty, mean comments about how everything is wrong, the world is screwed up, society is screwed up, and everything is wrong, everyone is wrong except them. It's not a coincidence that their ego is doing that, right? There's something really deep going on there. So that's the nine traits. And remember to be diagnosed a narcissist, you only have to have five of them. And I think Harley has all nine, to be honest. In my experience working in a prison with these kind of people, like diagnosed people, I've never seen a case as obvious as Harley. And although this video is about exposing him, it's also about informing others about what narcissism is because most people don't really know much about it and the more you know the easier it's to protect yourself so for the rest of this video let's just go through some red flags uh you have somatic narcissists somatic narcissists are very soma means body very physically oriented Doreen Ryder has an obsession with body image to the point where he thinks your body fat defines your value as a person. He constantly criticizes others who aren't as slim as him, and he regularly shames and makes fun of people suffering from anorexia. It's clear that he's suffering from an eating disorder himself. He has an obsession with being skinny. How come the people that critique me are never as lean as me? Ever. I can never, you, can, you can't see any striations in them. You know, he, he, like, get him to flex her arm and look at the styrations. So you can see here, 13 years, bit of muscle on the legs, bit of leanness. <laughs> Is that much fat on the legs? Look at that fat, the bingo wings, doing right as bingo wings. But I'm still pretty lean, you know? Still pretty lean. I'm a lean machine. And I'm, you know what I mean? Pretty fucking good. It's the guy with, like, 
you know, 17 selfies um, of his body. He's probably not wearing a shirt. You can just tell, like, he just thinks he's, you know, Johnny Chachi. Like, he just is the man. Just <clears throat> games. Let fat. Oh, I'm so lean for so long. So camera cut out. Gotta get the shirt off. Yeah, 3.9% body fat. Cook a fucking vegan egg on these biceps guns. <laughs> you could be hanging out with a narcissist. They'll literally be snapping pictures of themselves 50% of the time. And they'll be looking at the face and doing all this stuff um, non-stop. They're obsessed with themselves. They're obsessed with social media. They're obsessed with social media and, and likes and oh uh, that person posted this on social media did you did you see what he said i don't care and people shouldn't care but narcissists do because they always want to undermine people they always want to gossip about people they're bullies that's what they do folks they bully people Durian rider talking about weight gain uh so many full Fake people, Philly Rockerton is getting fat on fruit. Oh, attack, attack, attack. It's underhanded, that's the thing. It's not, I hate this person. It's underhanded. It's all like, oh, we're trying to help. Or, oh, she's getting bloated. You have also delusional narcissists. These narcissists tell really wild stories. And I really don't think that anybody ever believes them because these stories are so grandiose and so over the top. But the Raw Till 4 community is quite cult-like and they listen to Durian Rider's word as if it were holy doctrine. You know, stuff like, oh, well, you know, I, I had a, I have $10 million in the bank, but, you know, I'm, I'm a gardener because I, I just like to be outside. So, you know, stuff that just doesn't really add up. I've still got the house. I've still got the money. I've got all that lifestyle. No one has a better lifestyle than I do. They're bragging about how much money they make. I'm, I will make more money. I do make more money than you ever will. And if you ever make close to the amount of money I make, you'll be working 70 hours a week plus in a job you motherfucking hate. Well, I'm getting the best, man. I'm buying the best. I've got the money. I want the best. I've got a lot of money in the bank. I can make money easy. Money is not a problem for me. Money just flows for me. What's affordable? You know, affordable for me is <laughs> sky's the limit. It's interesting how Harley claimed he makes so much money and he's so, so rich and have all this lifestyle and have all this house and everything because his behavior shows the exact opposite. Uh, last summer he had a bunch of like teenagers living in his back backyard in tents and <laughs> he charged them for living there. Uh, not exactly the behavior of a millionaire. So this is the kitchen. As you can see there's no fridge here. And here are the light switches but as you can see none of the lights work. Oh here are his infamous drawers of his bike tools. Um, it's quite messy here. A lot of mess. Table. Here's the backyard. That's a table. Cherry boxes. We live with no hot water most of the time. No lights, no fridge, no furniture, and a lot of tents <laughs> and a lot of people in a one bedroom place. So, yeah. Only a few years ago, I was on the street, homeless, living on welfare. All right? And now look at me talking about he thinks people want what he has what does he have what does he have all he's really got for all his training and fitness is he cycles up hills faster than some of his friends he's over the hill as a term he's not going to be winning any competitions he's not really doing anything nobody cares nobody cares your life you literally live in um warehouse units look at look at their houses that's that's their life. <laughs> There's even a video of, of June Rider going through people's bins to pick out plastic bottles. You're like, wow, we want your life, June Rider. <laughs> that's what narcissistic people do. They just think that they're these hugely important people when in, in fact nobody really gives a shit about them. Um, they're, they're stupid. They're comedic. And that's what's sinister about Harley because I think... The majority just look at him as a joke or a clown or a troll. But for the people he targets, he's a very dangerous person. Red flag number 10 is big ego, which probably is not a big surprise. 
most people, you know, when they think of a narcissist, that's what they think of. You know, that, that person that has that huge ego, um, you know, who won't shut up about themselves. They're bragging, they're boasting. Everyone, man, that I hang out with goes next level. Even my fucking people who hate me, man. I've helped them turn their lives around. I've done Paris Press Paris in 51 hours 30. No support, no stims. I've ridden over 400,000 Ks. And your ego's just gotten out of control. You, you've got to check yourself. Take a big dose of humble pie. You're telling your flock there on your Q&As that you and Freely are the number one most powerful force in the vegan world that, that's ever been created. Well, just the fact that you're saying that says a lot, how your ego is just totally swelled up. You need to bring it down a notch. Get back to the real world here, bro. You know, they're the guy that has the flashy sports car. Hey, what's up? And I'm in my Ferrari. I don't to be interrupted, all right? It's good to it's good to give the Ferrari a bit of oil, uh, get rid of acceleration here and there. When I'm driving that Ferrari around, I'm not going to go and scratch another Ferrari. What? Please remember here, Junior Major, you've never passed a driving license, driving test. <laughs> you're driving a Ferrari. No, you're not. <laughs> you know somebody who had a Ferrari and they let you sit in it while somebody took a photo and a video while you revved the engine and then took it up and then you held the camera afterwards as they drove away. But when we drive that Ferrari around and people look at you, you can see the jealousy because they want that. Let's not try and use that as as whatever it is you're trying to use just now. I lost my place there. So did I did I mark that as bullshit? Did I do bullshit there? I've lost count. A lot of them are really bad drivers because they're just impulsive. <laughs> so they're really bad drivers and uh, they get they can get road rage really easily. So, you know, pay attention to that. Well, controversial vegan blogger Harley Johnston rose to fame as the partner of social media star Freely, the banana girl who spruiked a diet of eating 50 bananas a day. Now, the agro cyclist has uploaded a clip of himself losing his call at a driver who dangerously overtook him on a narrow hills road just yesterday. But did he go too far? You be the judge. In this situation, a, a car passed us very close, and me especially, uh, within pretty much a foot, like within touching distance of the car. And coming around this corner, as you can see, the car has not left any space between us. Kill me, man! Kill me, man! You wanna kill me? I'm here! Kill me, man! Well, let us know what you think on our Facebook page. And people did let them know and pretty much everyone thought it was a complete idiot in that situation. Which leads us to the next thing with narcissists. His version of what happened was quite different than the general public. Their stories really portray them as like a victim or a hero. The hero stories, again, it's ego, it's status. Someone pulls their car over, they're looking for a fight. If you don't back yourself, they're gonna beat the fuck out of you. They're probably gonna kill you, man. So that's just the world I live in, man. I've been stabbed before, been in prison before, and I lived on the street, man. But more cyclists, man. I haven't had no one's no one's done shit to me this week on the bike, man. A lot of other cyclists have written me and said, Harley, like, what's going on? It's like the hard drive's a bit more friendly this week. Right. I really haven't I don't know if I've ever really come across one that that has been clever enough to be able to hide their victim hero speak. So it's a pretty it's a pretty accurate sign, and it's because they don't have uh, accountability, right? So everybody in their past is crazy, and they've just been screwed over all these you know dozens upon dozens of times. It might be something like, oh, they had a really rough inner city childhood, or their parents used to beat them, or their parents were you know again somehow abusive. And where I come from, if you don't back yourself, you get fucked up. Simple as that. So so that's part of the victim speak. All these all these keyboard warriors out there, everyone's like, oh, knock that. That cyclist off his bike and beat him up on that. It's like, mate, in real life, in 13 years of uh, being on the internet, dealing with keyboard worries, only once ever has someone come to my face and punched me. And that's what I had my head down after 12 hours riding up a hill 
and uh, they knocked me off my bike, sucker punched me, that's still going for court and stuff. And I had road cycling shoes on, there's nothing much you could really do, so luckily yeah. Made him, I broke it up. Now this is another one of the stories made up uh, by Harley. Uh, the person he's talking about is a guy called Anthony Colpo. And there's actually footage of that incident he's talking about. Uh, let's take a look. Why don't you and I get in the fucking ring one day and we'll go fucking at it face to- yeah, You don't know who I am! What's your name? You you're a fucking idiot! Just relax bro. Look, you you're a you fucking is, wanker! Yeah, you know who he is. Man. You're a worthless! piece of shit. Okay, that's cool, man. You're fucking worthless. Off, you know, You're a little off, fucking mate. skeleton. Take off, mate. Take off. Anthony Colpo and I were communicating by email a few years back and I have always supported him 100% because I know that what he says about no balls Harley is completely true. Anthony confronted Harley the wimp a few months ago and ripped him a new asshole. So I'm not entirely sure how this whole things started but I think Harley wanted some kind of attention from Anthony and he was just completely ignored so Harley started to spread lies about him and it ended up with Anthony making these huge articles about Harley and pretty much exposing him and of course uh, this made Harley f furious so he's bringing up this lie again and again about Anthony and actually he's uh, Harley's ex-girlfriend uh, has come out and also said that it was a lie. She revealed that Harley told her that he made it up too, which you can see here. So that's all victim hero speak and Harley has a lot of these stories. So this is where you, he's then hoping for pity and people to go, oh, Riding home. And a bus come right next to me and fucking sort of like hit me. And I said to the bus driver, hey, no one stopped. I went to court. He got charged. But I couldn't work. I oh. stood up, I had pain. Oh. I went a bit part time, and my physio said it's going to delay your recovery. I think this is imagined. I think this is bullshit because the only story I've heard throughout the years I've been watching Harley before is he's been talking about how he had a sore knee. And that's another thing with Harley, if you follow him for a while, you'll notice that his stories evolve over time. So it starts with like a sore knee, and then he was hit by a bus, and then he's going to court, and... It's like he's just trying to... he's testing how far he can push the lie. Everything goes back to feeding their ego. Every single thing that a narcissist does is to feed their ego. And that's really, really, really important to remember. You know, why does he lie? It's to feed his ego. It's to see if you're, if he can get you to buy it. If he can get you to buy it, that's a small win for him. And it's a small way for him to say, or to feel like he got one up on you. So he's that much better and you're that much stupider, right? So it makes him feel better. It's not about veganism anymore. Yeah. It's about egos. This entire Rotel 4 high carb, low fat is the laughing stock of the entire vegan community. This is not about activism, this isn't about animals, and Harley has justified his bad behavior in the name of veganism, which is unacceptable. You've slandered, you've ended people's careers, all in the name of self-interest. Narcissistic rage. Once you fucking in this. I don't want to I fucking fuck, man. I just want to fucking watch this kind of fucking road. According to the research, they're all like, very angry people. I don't want to do this. Why, you're mate? Because you're a fucking dog cunt! Why, you're mate? Because you're a fucking dog cunt! And I don't have hate towards you, I don't have anger. So you don't have anger? <laughs> What's that last 10 minute been? I fucking hate you! Oh my god, you're a cunt! Go, 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 go! <laughs> but I'm not angry. If that's <laughs> if that's your attitude when you're not angry, <laughs> what are you like when you're angry? You fucking want me in prison with fucking pedophiles and fuck. We go from Harley and myself having a conversation where he's it for me it looked like he's not even interested in having, then he literally jumps directly to Sam. With this level of aggression, I have never seen anyone exhibit. It's fascinating to see. It's not a reasonable response. That's not a regular human response to having a discussion. And the in let me let me stress this very vividly: is that 
the entire time, Sam and myself were just trying to have a conversation. Mm. We're not trying to fight the guy. We're not barbarians. We're trying to have a logical conversation on the doisette. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Crying at inappropriate times. A lot of people think that narcissists can't cry. And that's not true. I've seen it firsthand. Um, I know a lot of other people have too. Um, however, keep in mind that every single thing that they do is there's some sort of end game for it. It's always a manipulation and crying is no different. Some narcissists, and I've seen this too, do fake crying. And if you've never seen this in person, it's really wild. It's so weird to see an adult fake cry. And again, it's like this, it's like their inner four-year-old who really thinks that, that they're convincing us that um, they're really crying and it's so obvious that they're not. Um, you know, they're even like wiping away tears that aren't there. They're, oh, 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 I'm just, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't. Back in the... Old could see that that's not real so it's very very strange again it's all for some sort of end game manipulation um, for attention for you know status for some sort of social um, whatever you know proof that they are decent people there's something behind that and there was something behind it what happened uh, last summer uh, Harley had some outrageous behavior and it ended up with his girlfriend dumping him after nine years. And what Harley did was to try to spin the situation around, as he always does. Um, so he tried to portray his now ex-girlfriend as all kinds of things that you'll see now. Phil has been using Botox since 2013 and I caught her out. She lied to my face. Our relationship definitely changed after that. Normal people have accountability and they're able to kind of introspect and think back to, hey, where did I go wrong? What could I do different? Um, you know, there's that insight into things. We don't just blindly say, well, that's not my fault or, you know, that marriage or divorce was 100% the other person's fault. But a narcissist generally will. In a lot of the recent videos from 2013 onwards, and her mentality just changed so much. And that definitely affected her relationship. But the fact that she lied to me again and again about the Botox. So for example, they might, and again, this goes back to red flag number six, which is unusual amount of crazy people in their life. And it's because they don't have uh, accountability, right? So everybody in their past is crazy. So that's part of the victim speak, right? It's always, if you were to ask them about their ex, it's always some form of, you know, they're crazy, they're bipolar, they're, um, you know, an addict, an alcoholic, they're highly manipulative. She's one of the best manipulators, with the best manipulator I've ever met in my life. They're all these things, but narcissists tend to, tend to actually like literally use that phrase often. Crazy. It's fucking crazy, man. Bipolar, addict. So that's how obsessed she is. Uh, that they are an addict, an alcoholic, uh, abusive. The truth is, man, she was so abusive to me. She used to hit me a lot that their ex is all of these things. And generally, if you listen to them, all of their exes are like this. They are the victim in this situation, the perpetual victim. She's just got a really bad temper, man. She didn't end up just coming at me. You know, she'd scratch me so hard in my arms, you know, that would bleed, things like that. She lined me up and she punched me square on the side of the head and I fell out of the chair. I was sitting in the chair and feel he punched me in the head so hard that I fell out of the chair. And that he's the victim of this. And he also might be the hero because boy, he really wants to stay for you or for the kids. He really thought you would change. I've done a lot of martial arts. I've had a lot of you know, fighting and sparring. I'm used to getting hit, but when you're getting hit by someone you love, but I sort of dealt with it. And I'm a pretty forgiving person, so I forgave it. And it was all good. And I was sort of cool with it. But you're just not changing. Because when you spend that much time with someone, you, you know, fucking almost nine years, but almost every day, it's not really well. And then they change, man. I'm sorry to all my fans, our fans, but 
You guys looked up to it so much. I feel like we let you down. I'm so sorry. If you stuck around, in my opinion, you've been a dumb fuck fucking loser. And it's just a fucking choice to be a dumb cunt fucking loser. Doormat, dumb bitch, dumb cunt, arrogant, whatever the fuck, asshole, whatever. Dumb fuck. Huge hypocrite. <laughs> so, what do I mean by this? Well, a hypocrite is somebody that has the attitude of, you know, do as I say, don't do as I do. So there's this double standard as far as behavior goes. So they're going to be lying, cheating, stealing, manipulating, kind of doing whatever they're going to do, but they are horrified and outraged if you're even acting remotely close to how they're acting. And this is Sam McCallum on the wrong side of the road. Stay on the fucking right side of the road, the correct side of the road. What messages does this send to the locals? We're guests, man. When you guess in someone else's country, then you should follow the rules. Why? Why do they do this? Well, narcissistic people have they're selfish and they have this attitude of entitlement that they just are entitled and that the world just needs to be okay with it that's what makes their behavior so problematic it's because there's no true accountability on their behalf for what they're doing and there's no because there's no accountability of that what they're doing is wrong, there's no remorse and there's no real desire to change. Low to no regard for rules or laws. And so with this red flag, it's this really common behavior with all types of highly manipulative people. The university locally or the school said, we need, you have to have, to have a university degree. You got a degree, don't you? So when you want to make it fucking happen, you'll make it fucking happen. Sometimes it involves doing illegal stuff. Print the fucking degree. You know, if you're going to follow those laws that are fucking totally meaningless, you're going to let that get in the way of you getting your goals done to some meaningless arbitrary law. You can follow those shitty laws or whatever and, you know, be a, a drone of the system or you can be creative and make it fucking happen. What the fuck are you going to do to make your goals happen? I know what I've done. I'll show you more stories in person because some of them I probably wouldn't put it on the internet. <laughs> I'm here with Robert, and we're gonna go, I'm gonna go pick up his bike from the Salvation Army at Whitmore Square. I'm gonna cut the lock with a hacksaw because he's lost the key, and I'm gonna drop it back at Hackney Lodge just in case the police are wondering what I'm doing stealing the bike. And you're cool with that? Yep, I got, I, I, I agree, and uh, I let him do, right, do it. Here we go. <laughs> this is how easy it is to steal bikes. No one's gonna do anything. I'm gonna walk up. I'm gonna get in. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Rob, we've got his bike back to him. You stoked? You happy you got your bike back? I'm very happy to get my bike back. Whose lock is this one? Is this yours? No, no I know. Um, I borrowed that from someone. Okay. Well, that's how easy they are, that's how easy they are to cut through. Yeah, one snip, it? boom, popped it open. Unreal. Yeah. And no one stopped me. Yeah. No one stopped me. And no one stopped you. No, no one cares. He's born. And when I say low to no regard for rules and laws, I'm not just talking about the kind of rules and laws that a person would get thrown into jail for. I'm talking also about more of like social contract kind of laws. So questionable ethics, questionable morals, questionable values. You came out and made an Instagram post telling if any girl disagrees with Freely, they should basically kill themselves. They're a cancer to the vegan movement. Like. Well, again, what kind of talk is that? This is completely unacceptable. A 38-year-old man telling teenage girls to kill themselves. I think that's, even for you, Harley, a new all-time low. Some of these people do a really great job at hiding this. They might even come across as a very upstanding citizen that they really you know, value morals and, and ethics and values and laws. My highest value in life is contribution. Oh, so, so now, so he's got people to pity him. He's got, he's given the compliments to the people that trust him. And now he's trying to promote himself as, I, I do good things. They fake compassion. They fake love. Everything's fake. You can't do that. That's just not right. And we pack a stand for that. And we always will and we always have. My goal is not, my highest value in life isn't approval and feeling significant. My highest value is contributing to people and animals and the planet. My fucking life purpose is to help people help the planet. When you work as hard as I do at helping people help themselves. Do good shit on the planet, that's my life purpose. My highest drive in life is contribution. Because that's my purpose, man, is to do good things on the planet, to help the environment, to help the animals, to help people, man. I'm here to help. Here to serve. And then here they are doing the exact opposite behind closed doors. What's wrong, Harley? 
What's, What's wrong? wrong is... Did you just take my glasses off and throw me off the bike? No, totally did he? Oh, maybe he did. Why, is, why would I jump off the bike with Harley? I don't want anything to do with him. Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, now he's on the camera. Now he's different. Yeah. Now he's different. The different Harley's out. So Harley's just pulled out his camera because I have, and he's starting to act a bit different. That's right. He's just pulled me off the bike. I, like many others, have been a victim of Durian Ryder and Freely's online bullying and threats of violence. What he is doing to these people, everyone in the past that he has treated like this, that he is threatened with violence. These people are preaching for violence. Like in the community that is supposed to be the most non-violence there is, like vegans. I'll see you in Chiang Mai, just me and you, and we'll deal with it. All right? Well, as a fight. Is, is that a threat? That's a threat. Is that a threat, Harley? I just want to say, I was, I was what is that? That's off. insinuation of a threat, Harley. You can't say that type of shit to people. You start realizing that everything about them is a lie. Durian Ryder has defamed me, threatened me, and invited others to assault me. Harley basically uh, says that you know he wants to throw me off the mountain. Um, you know, he wants to. He wants to punch he wants to hurt me. So. Sam in the face and knock him off the mountain. I mean, the beauty of all the, the beauty, the beauty of all of this is that it's all on film. Everything is filmed. You literally assault, harass, and bully Sam on the mountain for no reason. You, you went out of your way to pull your bike around coming down the mountain and intimidate and bully Sam. Legally speaking, he's now guilty of defamation uttering threats, i.e. uttering threats of violence, and inciting violence. And all of those are real crimes. Pattern of instability. So what do I mean by pattern of instability? Well, I mean chaos, drama, conflict. We try to stay away from the drama. That's not our wheelhouse. That's Harley's thing. It always seems to be having some kind of feud or fight with someone. I'm just trying to keep just the whole Harley and drama out of it. He's really intense at the moment due to Joan Ryder and all the drama. And he's no, he's just desperate for views and he's just putting out nonsense content. He's putting out hate-filled content because that gathers more views. He likes to, he likes to stir things up. He likes to stir things up. And all you end up doing is fucking slagging off other vegans for their fucking weight gain, their food choices, their fucking exercise programs. You're absolute pathetic. It's almost like it's just Harley being Harley. Like this is just... This is just what Durian Ryder does. This is just what he's done for years now. The only common theme with the vegan drama over the last few years is you. The only issue that anyone has is Harley. And you're giving a lot of drama, but you are such an embarrassment to the vegan community. Um, they are basically, if you were to listen to them tell it, they are the perpetual victim. I'm not going to fucking kill myself. I'm not going to give up the internet. They've yeah, you're not going to give up the internet. You're just fucking manipulating everyone to hope that some people are feeling sorry for you when what you're actually doing is trying to make people not realize the amount of shit that you're pushing out of there. And I will say some of them tend to hide this better than others, but by and large, it's, you know, trouble with holding a job or um, holding together their finances or friendships. One of the people that used to really respect Joan Ryder end up commenting and this is what he had to say. I have respected you for years, Harley, time and time again. You have burnt every single person one by one that gets close to you. This guy does have a point. There are a lot of people that have basically, you know, cut association with Jern Ryder. Now here's the challenge for those of you who know Harley. Can you mention one long-term friend of Harley? Just one, and by long-term I mean Three years. Basically, it's a lot of actions that don't line up with a lot of their words. And they exploit people. And so the only way to really tell if their pattern of instability is because of life happening to them or them happening to them is to really take things slow and to examine how the, are their relationships with those that would know them best meaning their children, their former spouses, if they have them, or former girlfriends or boyfriends or parents. My mom had um, Harley and brought him back from the hospital. I sort of grew up for a long time resenting him because thought he was crying because he wanted attention and he was just some kid that complained all the time or whatever, but I hadn't seen him for about 20 years. My ex-boyfriend, it has been next level sort of stress. It has been literally crazy 
the amount of lies, slander, manipulation, bullying, harassment, stalking has been incredible and disturbing and really upsetting considering you know when you're with someone for a long time and suddenly that person turns on you and you're like what's going on you know but it's just it's really hard to deal with wow how can this person say these things you know why would they just be so horrible why would they lie so much and the reason is simply because he's bitter and he can't have me and he does, he didn't like being rejected you know i don't want to give him attention because that's all he does is thrive off attention i don't want to be used by him anymore and I, and I know that I'm not going to be because I'm out of that relationship. But the reason I haven't spoken a lot about this is because I don't want to give it more attention because I know that's what makes it snowball. Like I feel like the best I have in my life, and it's especially to do with being free of someone who was destructive for me. You know, and, and to see kind of what other people have to say about them and how they react to them. And I'll, t I'll touch about on this a little bit more in video uh, for red flag number 36. This is about people who either love or hate them um, because this pattern of instability tends to really polarize people. We are the people who polarize the most because we speak with passion, we speak with transparency, we speak with clarity and objective information. We polarize our audience. Either fucking love us or you fucking hate us. People either love them or they hate them. There's the group of people out there that really believe all of the narcissist excuses and lies. And then there's the second group, which is the people that really want to believe all of the narcissist excuses and lies. And then there's the third group who no longer believe the narcissist excuses and lies. And so the first group tends to really love these people because they just believe everything. They take everything for face value, which probably are a lot of lies right? About how great this narcissist is of a person, how helpful they are, how above and beyond they really go. He's the highest caliber vegan in this entire movement, in the entire YouTube vegan community, whatever. He's the highest caliber vegan. He has inspired so many people. He has helped so many people. When you think about it, they have, they made this whole vegan YouTube thing. Durian Rider is like the best person I've ever met in my life. He's right most of the time. 99.9% .9 of the time, Harley is right. He gives you a lot of facts. Just seeing the human, the human Harley that is there and he's on point. He's on point. Of course we love Dorian Ryder. He's a great guy. He's very honest in what he says. He's 100% transparent. He's very truthful. Harley is incredible. Harley is incredible. Harley. He's just on this other level. But at the end of the day, Harley's not a bad guy, man. He's a really good person. He has this need to help people, and this is why I like him, because he just wants to help everybody. Harley is the most positive force I've come across in my life. Because we're living in this world of instant gratification, people aren't looking below the surface of things anymore. And if they did, they'd see that Harley does what he does for his fellow humans, for the animals and for the environment that he lives in. My kind of antennas detect the liars. And my antennas work quite well. Polly is a legitimate guy. I'm gonna support him. And I think he's a really great guy and I'm gonna support him no matter what to the end. If you worship the narcissist, if you love them, they will keep you close and they'll probably treat you quite well too. A queen will treat her servants quite well if the servant does everything that they ask. Um, they will get rewarded. The social leverage that Harley has is nothing like I've ever seen in terms of the sort of the, follow, the fellowship that he has and the sort of loyalty he has with people is something I've never seen in my entire life. Narcissists have a mask and it's very difficult to see behind it. Sometimes to see behind it, it's, it's very difficult. Um, it takes sometimes years and it takes a lot of heartbreak and uh, pain sometimes to see the mask. Infatuate him as this, you know, person that's helped them and it's like this messiah and then, you know, when guys like us try and like, yo, say, yo, this, you know, this guy's not all what he says and he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's dangerous and he lies a lot about stuff. It's, it's hard to turn those people and switch them on to, to acting critically against him. So we, we understand and we've all been there with you okay. watching this video that, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard. 
And of course, the people that are that no longer believe their excuses and lies have had enough of their bad behavior. They see them for what they are, which are just liars and they're just destructive people. So they hate them. They're, they are just done. And if you were to ask them about them, it makes them oftentimes really angry because so many other people only see the good in these people and they think that they're this fantastic human being when the reality is no, they've caused a ton of damage and destruction um, in people's lives. How are people following him? How, how the fuck has this guy rose to fame? I don't get it. You know what? I think I do get it because I was one of those fucking minions of his and I thought, yeah, Dream Rider is like this and that. It's mind blowing. Like this is what we're dealing with in 2016 in the vegan movement. Th this is what it's come to. You're a fucking embarrassment to the vegan community, honestly. Throughout the rest of this video, when I say vegan, I'm not referring to all vegans, just the radical, delusionally self-righteous ones. A lot of my friends have even disliked me for not disliking Harley afterwards. Like, I've had a friend stop talking to me because I made a video saying how nice Harley was. I've had people tell other people that Ted made them very sad because Ted said that Harley and Freely are really nice people. I'm getting all these like really nasty like messages in my inbox and I've always gotten these anytime I kind of mention Harley and Freely. How can you support such horrible bullies? I understand, you know, because I, I was once there. You know, just a few months ago, I was blindly I idolizing Durian Rider. I, I was viewing everything that he said as the absolute truth and I was just going along like a mindless drone. You know, I had no intention of using any kind of free thought. I, I was just listening to every single word that he said and believing it as the absolute truth. I can no longer condone some of Durian Ryder's behavior because it's disgusting. That's the big problem. The people that are liking this type of photo and sort of, you know, promoting, by you liking a photo that he puts up, basically defaming Sam, you're encouraging that type of behavior. And Harley himself is basically just looking for attention. And you guys who are fans of Harley are essentially promoting and encouraging bad behavior. The biggest leaders of the movement are fucking preaching to violence. And again, to all the people watching this video who are fans of Harley, we were fans once as well. Mm. But I, I hope and pray that someone watching this video can wake up and to realize the type of individual that Harley actually is. Not the little cute guy behind the camera, talking cool stuff about whatever. This is who he actually is as a person. And I want you to ask yourself one very important question. Is just because he's nice to one person, does that make up for everything he's done in terms of defaming, lying, libel, slander of all the other people in this entire community? This is not okay. I mean, some of what they're doing on social media, if they're in the UK, would be seen as a misuse of telecommunications equipment, slander, written threats of violence, apparent incitement of violence, from what I can tell, copyright theft, cyberbullying of the terminally ill. I mean, that's not illegal, it's just a dick move. But just the general bullying of people uh, in the vegan community. This just drama fest of, of just, just ego trips. Why do I support Freely and Durian Rider? And uh, <laughs> straight away you're like, yeah, why Why does anybody do that? You know what? The funny thing, Harley, at this point is this isn't even about veganism anymore. You've been slandering people since the start of your entire YouTube career. You know, they're really nice people in real life. And uh, if you don't like them, it's because you've, you've just taken their message the wrong way. <laughs> so it's like... Nope. Nope, nope, nope. That's, that's not quite how it is. Oh my god. I literally want to go back in time and shoot myself in the head for being such an idiot. And you've moved on with your life a little bit. You'll look back and you'll see them in a different light. You'll maybe see the true them, not the fog, not the magic, uh, the dark magic, the black magic, the glamour that they've laid on you. You'll come to see that no, they weren't that special and the idea of them as some sort of mini celebrity is actually a bit embarrassing now. I feel a bit cringy about that phase of my life, the way I treated them, the way I spoke about them, the way I saw them. Because they, you know, they were, that's a con artist. It's an addict, it's a con artist. This is how they behave, this is who they are. They're con artists, they're extorters. They don't know how to get what they want via legitimate means, but they know they deserve it and they want it really badly, so they're gonna do it via the non 
legitimate means of uh, bullying or extortion or you know uh, deception seduction and so on so i would say the reasons why most people dislike uh, diddly rider are because of one that they are hypocrites so they're first of all they're hypocritical behavior and actions um but they promote hate generally in their in their videos, a lot of them which are start off with not hating, just saying. Now I'm not hating, just saying, just sharing my comments and criticism. It's not a hate video. Now I'm like, this is not a hate video, nothing. This is just uh, sharing my comments and criticism. Now this is not a hate video, just sharing my comments and criticisms. It's not a hate video, just sharing my comments and criticisms. It's not a hate video, just sharing my comments and criticisms. No, I don't hate these guys. Anyway, so that's the model of comments and criticisms. Uh, not hate and just saying. Now, no hate towards Casey. Now, this is no hate towards Casey. It's not a hate, nothing. Again, not a hate video. So, no hate towards Casey. So, not hating. Not hating on Scooby, just, just sharing my comments and criticisms. It's not a hate video. So, it's not a hate video. Now, I don't hate them. No hate in this video, just a bit of comments and criticisms. Again, no, no hate, but no hate intended. This is share my comments and criticisms. Not hate and just saying. Not a hate video, just share my comments and criticisms. Not hate and just saying. Now this is not hate and this is just saying. I'm just sharing my comments and criticisms. Ah, uh, so we have Bonnie, Rebecca. Now this is not a hate video. Today Bonnie had a big zit, a zit on her forehead. The zit was so big, it's a sort of something that Figsy would have. Figsy would be sniffing that zit out and have a little gnaw on it. You know, it's a big zit. Well, how to get a big zit like that? This big fucking zit on Bonnie's head. So a narcissist will look for that p part of your body or part of you that you're insecure about and they will, um, they'll, they'll always focus on it. They'll always prod it and they'll bring it up and, and really just picking at it because apparently they don't have uh, insecurities. I don't have any acne on my face but it, Bonnie's got this big zit. The thing is they, they are 100% insecure. They are so insecure, they hate themselves, they hate the way they look, they hate the way they've been brought up in life, they hate themselves, they, they're, they're very insecure people. They just bully others, um, they just bully other people to make themselves feel better. Narcissists are bullies. They're just disgusting, vile bullies. That's my thoughts, comments, and criticisms. Don't hate you. Not hating, just saying, just sharing my comments and criticisms. You know what? When Richard doesn't talk without a script, no jump cuts, he's fucking boring. Not hating, just saying. Well, that's actually, you're being a dick and you're totally hating. Yeah, it's not a hate video, we're just sharing our honest opinions. Right. So, they're, first of all, they're hypocritical behaviour and actions. Um, and they promote nonsense and embarrassing content, which will get correlated with the rest of the vegan community. So, in other words, whenever Durian Ryder is talking about whether he thinks um, gay is a choice. I believe being gay, 100% your choice. Some people say it's DNA, no, 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 no. I mean, I coach people a lot, and some people say, oh, it's just my DNA to be obese. <laughs> no, it's not, mate. It's a fucking choice to be obese. It's a choice to be gay. I do 100% believe being gay is a choice. Just like being obese is a choice. It's just like riding a bike is a choice. It's like getting in a car is a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice as an adult. It's a fucking choice. I find it deeply, deeply insulting that anyone would say that my sexuality is interchangeable. Being queer is not a choice. Um, no, absolutely not. When people ask me if gay is a choice, it's quite infuriating. A ridiculous statement. You can't help who you love. I didn't choose to be this way. I wouldn't choose to put myself through all of this stress. Did a video a while back, a few weeks ago, when I was in Monterey, California. So he's being gay choice, and I've got people love to take me out of context, or they just misinterpret what I'm trying to say, things like that, or misunderstand whatever. I don't really care. I don't really give a fuck. I still believe being gay is a choice. Just in case you're not clear, I guarantee you, I have more gay friends than you. I've got more gay friends than you. Than you ever will in your entire life. So. Zip it, please. That's just one kind of example where uh, the ignorance and intolerance um, that Freely and Durian Rider have towards members of the community, and at the same time, while they're promoting veganism, they're also promoting their nonsense concepts and ideas. And unfortunately for the vegan community, the audience we are watching these guys think these guys are representative of the rest of the vegan community, which they are not. So it's not just me that they've offended, it's the unfortunate damage which they're doing to the vegan 
movement, I think, is uh, one of the reasons why we don't like them. History of addiction. And I should also say just trouble with addiction in general, because a lot of times they have a lot of active, ongoing addictions. People ask me if I stayed on gear for five years and did no cycling, how swole would I be? I'd be fucking shredded. We're about 95 kilos swole. Full netty. Full netty bra. I was looking more muscular, my arms were sort of popping out. And then I've used them since then after dental surgery, like on my jaw, uh, when I had that big crash. Which looks to me like the normalization of steroid use. I'm on fucking zero. I'm not on any fucking. This is passion speaking. There's no caffeine, there's no Marte, there's no Ritalin, there's no Adderall, there's no cocaine. This is me talking to the fucking camera. He said he's not on the drugs. Nah, June Red, you're on the gas. So that's bullshit. <laughs> um, you will never get the truth from a narcissist. You will never know the full truth. They will only ever admit to the very bare minimum. It's only as, if, as soon as you find out a piece of information, then they'll admit to it. And then you find another piece, and then they admit to it. And then another piece, they admit to it. You will never, they will never be forthcoming about something. If they are forthcoming about something, I would say even question that. Because with everything with them is that's a half truth, right? And they're, they're never at a loss for words. So they are just so good at like tap dancing around the truth all the time. And for them, everything is... It's like a kernel of truth surrounded by like a big ball of a lie. Psychologists could do so much research on this guy's brain. Like the, obviously, the, like he fully admits that he has taken drugs in the past, or he was a full drug addict. He was a homeless, um, unemployed drug addict, and uh, possibly it's a case of the amount of drugs that he took did something to his to his mind, his consciousness, and he doesn't realize that he is doing the things that he is doing. Like, the person that you meet in person during the daytime, maybe that's one guy, and then at nighttime, he is a different person. Now, that's one theory. Another one is that he is a narcissist and he is wearing all these different masks. Wouldn't it be cool if there was, like, a vegan YouTube house where I paid the rent and I called the shots? No, it would be good if you took a break and got professional help. I know that sounds like a passive-aggressive note to end on, but it's not, because if we really wanted to see you taken off YouTube and Instagram and everything like that, it does seem like all we'd have to do is wait. You're both using social media for things like threatening violence, copyright theft, lying to others about terms of service, slander, and so on. You're threatening your own platforms that you've taken years to build up. And you're underestimating the intelligence of people who make up the vegan community. This is 20 minutes of some of the stuff you've done just over the past possibly two months or so to countless people. Just take a break. Do something else. Don't carry on doing this kind of thing. It is called Kengiroku. Do you understand the title? Tell him. Um, it means deceit, disclosed, or unmasked. I'm not afraid of you, you know, you're not gonna bully me into silence like you've done to everybody else.
some people, your objective might be just to prove that the other person is a narcissist. As in, they are actually narcissistically personality disordered. They're in the cluster B, they have more than five of the nine traits of narcissism, and they are probably, likely, highly probably, um, diagnosable as a malignant NPD by a qualified clinician. So that's the first tip I would offer you. Take yourself from prey to predator and start thinking about the other person's vulnerabilities, what they're insecure about, what they feel anxious about, not sure about, and deliberately provoke them. Deliberately open those wounds and throw salt in them in the same way a narcissist does to their victims. The revenge you could be seeking could be to actually cause the narcissist to have a public meltdown or explosion that exposes them for who they really are.